Hi, Michael Hurwich here for CreativeCow.net. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating 3D footage in Sony Vegas 10. And the first thing you have to do to create 3D footage is to create left and right eye clips. This can be done in software or hardware. Either way, it's done outside Vegas. So you could have a stereoscopic camera that would create two clips, one for the left eye, one for the right eye. You could have a rig that would hold two cameras and one camera would create the left eye clip and the other would create the right eye clip. Or you could create your left and right eye clips in software. For example, for this tutorial, I use 3ds Max. So this is a stereo camera rig in 3ds Max. And this is based on a tutorial at louimarcou.com. Once you've created your left and right eye clips, then you can combine them in Vegas. And there are five basic steps to that. Configuring the 3D mode in the project properties, dragging the clips into the timeline, pairing the clips, performing any necessary 3D adjustments or corrections. Now, when you create your left and right eye clips in software, it should seldom need any adjustments or corrections because it's very easy to align your cameras perfectly and make sure that your footage is exactly matching. When you're using a physical camera or cameras, it depends what kind of camera you've got, what kind of rig you've got, and what happens during the shoot. In that case, you may well need some adjustments or corrections. And finally, you render out your 3D and view it. There are various ways to view 3D. For example, you can view it side by side. There are some viewers that use side by side images, or you can learn to look at the images cross-eyed or in other ways that bring out the 3D. Or you may use anaglyphic glasses that have one cyan and one red lens. And Vegas is able to render out images for all these different viewing styles. So here we are in our Vegas project, and the timeline is empty. I'm going to go to File, Properties, and here's the stereoscopic 3D mode. Normally I would set this mode right now. And you have to set this mode before you can pair your clips. But I'm just going to try to pair the clips without setting that mode. I'm leaving it off just to show you this. So these are my two clips, Cam L and Cam R. So I'm going to drag Cam R into the top track and Cam L into the track right under that. Now I'm going to click on that clip, hold down the control key, click on the other clip, and right click. And you can see that this pair as stereoscopic 3D subclip is grayed out. It's not available. Hit escape to get out of that. Now go up here to Project Properties, and I'll just choose Anaglyphic Red Cyan, and click OK. Now when I right-click here, that option is available. When I click on that, it combines both those clips into one subclip, which is that Anaglyphic Red Cyan type of 3D. Now at this point I could continue to edit this. You can do all the things that you can normally do with 2D footage. You can trim it. I'll just control Z out of that. You can do fades. I'll just control Z that. Anything you can do with 2D footage, you can do with this 3D clip as well. In addition, if we hadn't started with a perfect left and right eye shot to begin with, we now have the opportunity to work with this. So let's just take a look at that. I'm going to click here on the Event FX, and here we have the Sony Stereoscopic 3D Adjust. So I'll just double click on that, and OK. I'll just get out of this now so we can see this. So one of the things that you get is this horizontal offset adjust. If you move this in the positive direction, you're going to be pushing the 3D effect back into the screen. If you move it in the negative direction, you're going to be bringing the 3D effect towards the viewer. 
So I'm just going to bring up another test file here. Now this is not actually stereoscopic footage. I combine this clip and this clip to make the top clip. But the two clips that I combined are not actually left and right views. The only difference between them is that one says L and one says R. But I can still use these to demonstrate what I want to show you here. Right now you can see that this paired clip, the one on top, is being displayed in side by side. I'm going to change that to anaglyphic. You could do that by going to Options, Preferences, Video. And here's where you can set that. Or you can just right click right in the view there, go to Video Preview Preferences, and it brings you to the same place. So I'll click here, choose Anaglyphic Red Cyan. And then I'll click here to track FX. So you can see that I have some negative horizontal offset. In this case, the 1, 2, 3 are not offset. They're not actually left and right eye views. So if I double click here to zero out this offset, you can see that the 1, 2, 3 line up perfectly. If I give it this positive offset, which would push it back behind the screen, you can see that the left eye is moving over to the left and the right eye is moving to the right. If I deselect this, it will only use the right eye to accomplish approximately the same thing. So you can see it's just moving the right eye over to the right. And now it's just moving the right eye over to the left. I'll double click to zero that out. And same thing with the left eye. Just moving the left eye in order to accomplish the effect. But in any case, that negative offset moves things such that the right side will end up to the left. It just happens a lot more dramatically if you use both eyes, and it ends up with more distance between the two. So if your footage is 3D to begin with, you can use this horizontal offset to exaggerate or minimize the 3D effect or even possibly move the image, say, from behind the screen to in front of the screen, and things like that. These controls here are basically for situations where the original left and right eye don't match exactly. So, for example, if one of the eyes is a little bit above the other, that's something you don't want. You want them perfectly level. You can use the vertical offset to correct that. If they don't zoom exactly the same, you can use the zoom offset to correct that. Keystoning or tombstoning occurs when one of the cameras is slightly tilted up or down. And that causes the image to distort in a trapezoidal pattern. You can correct that here. And this is if one of the cameras is slightly rotated. There's also an autocorrect button in which we'll try to analyze both of the eyes at hundreds of points and automatically determine what kinds of corrections need to be made. If you need to flip one or both of the eyes horizontally, you can do that here. If you need to flip one or both of the eyes vertically, you can do that here. And there are also some cropping options for the situations where the cropping of the two isn't exactly the same. In our case, we don't need any of these adjustments because the two pictures having been created by software are perfectly aligned. One other thing I'd like to show you is a slightly more convenient way of dragging your clips into the track. So I'm going to get out of this adjust, hit Alt-1 to bring the clips back up, you can select both of these and right click and hold and drag them down and when you release it will give you various options. Choose add across tracks. So that's a way you can get both your clips in with one drag. Now in this particular case I've got my left on top but let's go ahead and create a stereo clip from that with the left on top. So I've 
selected them both, right click, pair a stereoscopic 3D subclip. But now, if you notice, I've got some red ghosting on this side, blue ghosting on this side. If I go back here, I've got the blue ghosting on this side, red ghosting on this side. In this case, it's probably this type of ghosting that I really want. This gives me the correct 3D effect. So, if I happen to create one backwards, it's very easy to fix. You can just go to File, Properties, and Swap Left Right, and click OK. And that will also create the default for the render. Now you notice it didn't actually change it in the preview because the preview is determined here in the options. Or I can just right click here, go to Video Preview Preferences, and again swap left right and click OK. And now if I look at this one and I look at this one, they've actually reversed because it swapped all the previewing. But if this is the one I'm concerned about rendering out, I've now got this correct. This one is actually incorrect now because it was correct to begin with and I've swapped it. Quite often you'll want to have an external display. If you are set up with an external display, normally you'll be seeing your 3D on the external display and you really don't need to see 3D here. So, again right click, Video Preview, it gives you the option here to see only the left eye or only the right eye. And quite often that's what you'll want. So you're getting more or less a normal view here you're not seeing 3D, but you're not seeing that ghosting either. And then when you do need to check the 3D, you can look over at your external screen with your 3D glasses if necessary and view your 3D. One last thing, when you render, you may not want to render in the same 3D format that you've been viewing in or in the default format of your project. So you can change that when you go to Render As, go to Custom, and go to the Project tab. And here you can change the video rendering quality, but you can also change the stereoscopic 3D mode. So working here, you could render out any number of different versions of the same 3D project in whichever mode you wish. So that's an introduction to creating 3D in Vegas 10. I'm going to be including this project file and also a render as anaglyphic 3D and also side-by-side -side 3D. Thanks for tuning in and I hope this has been helpful.